Good evening, Bees fans, and welcome to our live from the Hive broadcast as the Bees host Wrexham in Vanarama National League action this evening. Coming up on our live from the Hive pre-match show, we're back once again with a double interview pre-match show for you as we first of all sit down with new man Lee Vaughan to get his thoughts on signing for the club. And then it's the turn of Ben Richards Everton as he discusses what the Bees need to do to try and turn their season around. There's plenty to come, so sit back, relax, and get in the mood for this evening's match. Tonight's clash with Wrexham could see new man Lee Vaughan make his debut at the Hive London. The right back has racked up over 200 appearances in the National League, so he certainly will bring experience to Tim Flowers' side. We spoke to him to get his thoughts on signing for the Bees. Lee, first of all, welcome to Barnet. Great to have you with us. You must be pleased to be back in with, with Dales and, and Tim again. Yeah, absolutely. Dales, Tim, Gaz, it's, it's, it's good to be back with, with the guys. Um, but we've got a job on our hands and, and we've got to be serious. And, and then start get some results together. It's been a disappointing season for the club so far. I know you'll want to come in and turn it around. Over 200 appearances in the National League, you, you certainly know the league well enough. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't come into this situation with my eyes closed. I know what's going on. Um, and it's a situation that the Barnet Football Club shouldn't be in at, at all. Um, and having experience in this league with Tim and, and, and away from Tim as well. Um, I haven't been at this end of the table and, and, and to be honest with you, I don't want to be at this end of the table. Um, so we need to put some results together. Looking at it from yourself coming in from an outside point of view, the boys don't seem to struggle with confidence out on the training pitch. Do you, is there anything you've noticed that maybe can change going forward? Um, well, I know you say that they haven't struggled with confidence, that they're quite a lively group, they're a good group. Um, I think the managers tried to keep everything quite fresh and, 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 and positive, you know, although when you're getting beat four, four or five, it, it's not good, is it, you know, and we need things to turn, if, whatever way that, that's going to be, um, I think it needs to turn quick um, for everyone around the club, the fans, you know, um, I think they deserve a little bit more. When you look at, at, at the group, it's a strong group, you know Dale as well, as you say, certainly got the characters to turn it around. Of course, yeah. Um, and when you come in, you have to come in with a new mentality. That's why you bring players in. I know you, you can't come in and, and, and be down about things that have happened in the past because you wasn't involved with them. Um, so that's why you bring new players in, fresh ideas, be lively around the place. And that's what we'll try and do. In some ways, has us having no game at the weekend helped you? Because you've been able to bed in with the group for a tiny bit longer before you might make your debut against Wrexham? Yeah, absolutely. It, it has helped me. Um, I mean, I haven't played football for a long time. Um, so the week of training um, have stunned me the world of good. Being at Telford, a uh, different experience for you from, from Solly Old. How did you find it there? And you must be pleased to, to make the step back up, I guess. Yeah, it was nice. It, that was always going to be the case. I was going to have a year out and concentrate on things for, for after football. But it's nice to be back playing full-time football. Yeah, absolutely. For Tim, you know him well and you know what he demands on you. Just tell us and tell the fans what kind of character we're getting from Tim because it's been a difficult situation for him to come into, I guess. Yeah, I think what you get with the manager is, is how he is in his interviews. That's very much how he is as a person. He'll tell you straight how it is. And he, he demands high standards. Um, and yeah, it's just a winning mentality, which is, which is why I'm very surprised things haven't turned already, but I'm sure they will, absolutely. I feel like it's probably the cliche that the Barnet fans will be fed up of me saying this year, but if we can get a win, we, we really need to try and kick on from there. Because it's been a couple of times where before you came, we, we've got a win and then yeah. it's just not turned the corner. How important would it be to, to get a foothold and now there's loads of games coming to try and build a bit of momentum? Yeah, listen, it's, it's very frustrating. I can, I can understand the Barnet fans are very frustrated, you know, and, and sitting here with you, I mean, talk's cheap. We, we have to produce now on the pitch. We have to give them something to be proud of, irrelevant what's going on with relegations and this and that. 
we need to go out there and give everything. And you know, there's no guarantees in football. I might come in and give the ball away every time I touch it, but I'll run for a brick ball for this football club while I'm here, and I'll make sure my mate next to me does the same. Wrexham will be a side you would have played a couple of times. One of those teams that are harbouring hopes of the playoffs. I mean, there'll be a lot of teams in the second half of the season who aren't too far away. Big game tomorrow night at the home. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a massive football club, Wrexham, just like us. Um, they're playing at the other end of the table. I'm sure they're, they're full of confidence. But listen, we have to concentrate on us and start doing things right at this place. Um, and that, that is honestly all we can do. Just lastly, when uh, I showed you around briefly when we, we took the photos and you seemed pretty amazed by the stadium and everything off the pitch, is it time to try and start replicating that on the field now? Yeah, well, I've heard before. I mean, we have everything in place here to be very successful. I've been at Bluffs, like Tranmere, or we have excellent facilities like this. And, uh, and I think this place deserves a good football team out on the pitch. And, and if we stick with it, it's like getting some results, it will turn quick. It's time to look back at the last time these two sides met in Vanarama National League action. It was a chilly Tuesday evening in North Wales on that occasion as the sides shared the spoils. Eamon Azaz made his debut and let's take a look at all of the action.
Ben Richards Everton will be hoping for better from himself and the side as we host Wrexham this evening at the Hive London. We caught up with Ben to find out what his take is on the side's poor form and how we can turn it around. It's been a difficult start to life at Barnet, I guess, results-wise, when you picked up a little knock. How do you summarise your, your first six or seven weeks in? Yeah, I've been, you know, I've enjoyed being out there playing uh, on a regular basis. Um, obviously, like you say, results haven't really gone in, in, in the way we would have liked them to. Um, only one win since I've come in, which is, you know, disappointing. Uh, but yeah, you know, we're, we're working really hard every day in training. Um, the gaffer uh, and you know Gary Wild and especially GA and um, Ali as well, trying to get the boys fit and you know fitter, sorry, and trying to get us in a position where we, you know we can compete and try and get a, a better results than we have been. Um, but you know, I, I think we're in the right hands and things will only get better, in my opinion. So. Um, Hopefully we uh, can pick up and start getting more wins. It certainly seems like the tools off the pitch have all come together. The, the training sessions look intense. Yeah. There seems to be a really good group of boys yeah. here. Yeah. What do we need to do to go that extra inch, I guess, and start turning yeah. some of these losses into, into better results? Uh, I think clean sheets are going to help. Um, you know, I've kept a clean sheet yet since I've, I've come in. Which again, has been disappointing uh, from our perspective. Uh, and, I just think, you know, we keep working in training and it will turn. Um, it, it's hard to put a finger on what exactly is going wrong at the minute, uh, in results-wise results, results wise especially. Um, but I just think, you know, like you say, the, the intense, intensity in training has been brilliant. Uh, you know, you come and watch training, you can see how, you know, we, we have got a group of winners and, and, and leaders especially as well. A lot of experience in there, a lot of young lads, but, you know, um, the experience of the boys as well, you know, helps the young lads. And I just think, we, all we can do is keep working hard and doing our best and trying to replicate what we're doing training onto a Saturday. You know, some of the stuff that we are doing in training don't necessarily on a Saturday replicate it. And I think that's where we're going wrong at the minute. I think you know if we can do more of what the gaffers wanting us to do on a Saturday, then you know inevitably we'll, we'll start picking up wins. And you know against Halifax, you know I think that's the most we've ever ran. Um, in, 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 in the game situation since I've been here. So that just shows you, you have to run yourself into the ground to get results in this league, especially, you know, if a team, you know, even if a team with ability comes here and, I'm, and the team that's probably not as good, you know, with the football works harder than them, they could get results. And I think that's what you saw against Halifax. You know, Halifax are quite a possession-based team. However, we yeah, ran harder than them and it showed them, the results showed at the end when we won the game. So. When you look at back at some of the, the bigger defeats, I guess the, the Yeovil game didn't help because we went down to 10, yeah. but the Kings Lynn game, a couple of others, we've just started quite slowly and then given yeah. ourselves a mountain to climb. Yeah. How important is it, particularly guys that start from tomorrow, let's say, we really yes. try and get out of the traps quickly because we did against Halifax yeah. and as you said, it was a good performance. I think the start's massive, especially for us, especially when you're in a, in a team at the minute when the confidence is quite low you know, uh, not winning many games. I think the start is very important. You know, I think if a team get a leg up, especially when they come and play us at home, you know, you give them a, a, a one or two goal lead, you give yourself a massive mountain to climb, sorry. So I think, you know, especially in our position and what we're in now, it's important to start well, you know, run the front foot at home. Obviously the fans aren't here yet, which would be a massive help, I think, as well, we like the, our 12th man. But at the minute, you know, we, we are where we are. We just need to try and do our best to get ourselves out of that bottom three, in my opinion, and, and, and you know, looking up the table instead of down the table. Let's talk about that relationship you have with Liam Daly. It seems yeah. to be a, a pretty close bond. Quite both vocal lads out there on the pitch, yeah. enjoying playing with him. Yeah, he's great to play against. You know, he's, 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 a, he's a massive figure, isn't he? He's a good character in the change room. He's, you know, someone that you want in your team. You know, I've got nothing but good things to say about him. You know, the brilliance he's coming in. You know, it's not. It's rare you come in, or you, you, your partner who you playing alongside. It's his first day as well, so it's like almost like a first day at school for both of us when we first come in, and you know, we literally went straight in at it. There's no, you know, there's no rest as such. It was like you know, straight into the starting eleven, and you know, scrap and battle, and welcome to the national league. So um, yeah, you know, he's, he's great. He's very experienced. Like you say, he's a massive talker. Um, you know, he loves it. he loves heading the ball. So take it, like usually, when I've had a um, centre half partnership, it's been me that's been the dominant in the air and winning all the headers. 
But I think in this scenario, you know, I think uh, he's giving me a run for my money there. And he's the one that's heading everything, and, and which, to be fair, was brilliant at doing so. You know, I'm, like I said, I'm enjoying playing again, uh, playing alongside him. Um, but the main thing for I know him and me as well is to start winning more games and keeping more clean sheets because as defenders that's what you get judged on as strikers you get judged on how many goals you score etc uh, etc et uh, goalkeepers clean sheets you know Loach is a great goalkeeper and he, you know and we, we do concede like three or four in some games and it, 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 I do feel very sorry for him because you know I've seen him in training I've seen him in games and you know since I've come in I've not been here for a long time you can see he's a, he's a, he's a quality keeper you know so um for him as well, I'd like to keep more, keep more clean sheets. And as a team as well, I think we, we start keeping more clean sheets. We we'll start because you get chances at this level, especially. Um, and you know, we've got JJ Hooper that's scored a few goals for us now. Um, and, and obviously, Courtney works his socks up there as well. And, you know, we're, we're trying to add to that as well. And I, I just think clean sheets are massive. If we can keep more, you know, you know, you know we could uh, we could start seeing a few more wins on the board. Do you think confidence is a big factor in our poor form recently? And do you think a win could certainly lift that? Because we seem to have, yeah. particularly maybe the top end of the pitch, players that will thrive on a bit of confidence. Yeah, that's it. Um, confidence is massive in football. You know, you can get into a habit of winning games, you can get into a habit of losing games. And I think at the minute we're on the other side and we're in a little bit of a habit of finding a way to lose. Um, rather than win, and we need to change that. We need to change it fast. We've got still got a lot, a lot of points to play for. Um, and you know, you go on a little run, you never know where you can end up. So, um, honestly, right now it's just about we've got to keep working hard. We, like I say, you can't one week work hard, uh, and then Tuesday night you, you, you use excuses to say you're tired from Saturday. You don't work as hard. Then levels have to stay high. And, it's standards and we all talk about it in training. It's just replicating that on a Saturday for me. I think if we can start doing that, keeping clean sheets, we'll have every chance of getting uh, a few more wins. There's been a lot of talk off the pitch in regards to the state of the National League season, yeah. promotion, relegation. As players, I assume that doesn't really cross your mind when you're getting past the white line to, to go and get three points. Yeah, it's. You can't listen to anything that's going on outside. All, you, all we can do is try and keep our own house in order and try and, like I say, get wins, um, regardless of what's happening with the leagues below um, and our league. You know, until they tell us, you know, the league's stopping, we've got to keep playing every week. You know, the games are coming thick and fast, and there's plenty of points to play for. So it's important that we apply ourselves correctly on a Saturday as we do in training. Um, and yeah, the main thing for me is trying to get as many wins as we can until the end, up until you know whatever happens with the league or until the end of the season. That's the most important thing. Um, so, just lastly, you signed on a, a bit of a, a longer term contract when you joined. Yeah. The fans obviously haven't been able to see you in person yet. They've just paid the second half of their in, uh, season ticket instalment. How important is it that we start giving them something to smile about because they've had to be extremely patient this season yeah it's, it's, you know it's, it's, as a football fan i can only imagine you know i've been asked them for the fun and it's we're, we're getting better times now obviously we're in the premiership now but I, I understand what it's like from a fan's perspective and also i know what it is like from a player's perspective it's very frustrating as a player you know because i want I'm, i've got a winner's mentality i've not come here to lose games i can tell you that I, I want to win as many as I can and that's the main thing in my head and I think the group's head that I'm working with now that they just want to win um, and we've got like I don't know what it is I can't put my finger on it yet but I think at, we can start by trying to keep clean sheets trying to work as hard as we can trying to outwork the other team and I'm sure that we'll start to get more wins than losses and I think as soon as we can do that the better I mean, you know, like I said, we've got a lot of points to play for. Um, and, you know, it's there, it's there for us. It's what we do on a Saturday that's going to change it. You know, we can, we can turn around and say, you know, oh, we can complain about this and that. But, you know, if we're coming up on a Saturday, you know, we, we want the fans to, to start saying better things about, obviously, Barnet FC. It's a big club. You know, you look around, there's great people here. It's a great facility. You know, we're lucky at what we've got here. So I just think we need to start. We owe the fans basically some some wins and something to you know enjoy their weekends and, and Tuesday nights. You know, we, I, I want to go on, and, you know, on, on, on Twitter and say you know, I'm, I'm I'm proud that the club is starting to win games and we're picking up. But at the minute, it's, uh, it, we just have to keep our heads down and work hard. It's, 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 
you know, there's nothing, there's no one to blame other than ourselves at the minute. And you know, we owe, we owe it not just to the fans, to the gaffer as well. It puts everything in place for us. Um, like I say, the fitness staff and everything, GA, are they? Um, everyone, the backroom staff, you know, doesn't go unnoticed. They, they do the utmost to make sure we get a win. And I think not only for the fans, for them, we need to start winning games. You know, it's us that play the, play the uh, game on the Saturday and the Tuesday night. So hopefully that we can make things better. The Bees weren't able to host Wrexham in the 2019-20 season, so let's take a look back at how the action unfolded up at the racecourse ground, where a certain JJ Hooper opened the scoring for the hosts on that occasion. Sparks crosses low, James gets a foot in to get it clear. Engine over the end though. It's Akinola, Akinola shoots just wide of the other spots. That's all we have time for on our Live from the Hive pre-match show. Stick with us and hopefully the boys can give you a performance to be proud of this evening. I'll now hand you over to our commentary team at the Hive London. It's Aaron Pullen and myself, Adam Rowe.